Hello, Mike Levin on Saturday, May 28th, 2022. T-shirt reveal, because when you're wearing this one, you can never do too many t-shirt reveals. Channel in the green, channel in the green, wearing the green, channeling the green. Found my red hoodie, because when it's not green, it's red, right? And uh, it's 9.30 a.m., so I spent longer in the grocery store. You get into it, it's one of the joys, right? And I figure I shall culture my kid. They need more paper things in their life. So online is great, but Mad Magazine is better. And I shall continue my practice of kind of, sort of, life casting. Can't be live casting, not in the car. I did that experiment. That did not work out excessively high latency. The, the era of live casting from the car with just our normal 5G phones is, is not upon us yet. It will be upon us. Maybe Starlink. Even though the Chinese say <clears throat> it'll be a priority to shoot down Starlink if it were a war, but if that were the case, we'd have bigger problems. So it's okay to get your broadband from the new generation of satellite networks, which blanket the United States in continuous bands of coverage. So you can probably drive from coast to coast and have broadband the whole way. Rural and everything, can you imagine? It's one of the key things making me think maybe th there's an RV in my future. I'm just taking like year to year leases and uh, the landlords can kick me out again like they did in this last place here in the Poconos. And uh, when they do, I may make my next stop a go. My stop will be a go, a go-go, an RV, a camper, a trailer. Who knows how I'll do it? But I have promised Big Red to my kid, and that time is rapidly coming upon us. It's one of my only assets. It's one of my only physical material assets in life. And um, it's paid off, you know? And it's a Jeep. So it's a paid off Jeep with that, you know, one time upfront purchase of Jeep insurance, which is a bit hefty when you get it, but a really good idea. Anything that wears out in the course of its life is uh, covered. Transmission goes, engine goes, as long as you have done the scheduled maintenance, which I've been making sure I do, it's all covered. It doesn't cover everything, you know, brakes wearing out in the course of, you know, just normal car wear and tear and tune-ups and stuff, you gotta pay for. But anything that insurance would normally pay for, it's covered. And that's for the life of the vehicle, so long as it doesn't change ownership. And so that's one of the great gifts I'll be handing down to my kid. They're turning 12 soon, 13, 14, 15, 16. That's only four years off. So I really have to explode on YouTube. I have to blow up on YouTube. My income and expenses are such that even though I do well for myself with a New York salary, I'm paying the extra amount as I have to, profoundly large extra amount. It would shock you if you heard. I am uh, running at a kind of level like this, non-savings. So hence my increased activity on YouTube. I'm YouTubing now because I need it. And uh, maybe my changing from doing this just for myself for cathartic and therapeutic reasons, evolving into doing it for you and for actual building up the audience and the follower reasons is kind of just a intuitive thing coming from the inside. It's solutions trying to uh, chip away and reveal themselves like the way Michelangelo talks about just chipping away to reveal the sculpture that is already inside the rock. Am I not a potentially big YouTube personality? Am I that much lower quality than all the people who have a million subscribers? <sighs> so 
according to the YouTube algorithm, sure, but uh, I'm going to teach you how to master, uh, you can't use master anymore, that word has been taken away from us, how to ascend to spontaneous expertise, non-thinking proficiency, um, automatic skills, automatic practiced skills, as if one were to have achieved a higher level of command over the skills, the um, movements, the mechanics of a thing. But GitHub is right. GitHub stopped using master as the main branch. It's the main branch. So perhaps we're achieving mainery in main. Does that sound in main to you? It's rather in main. So I teach you how to ascend to spontaneous high proficiency skills in particular technologies chosen for their future proofing nature and their lack of beholdenness, beholdenness, their lack of having to walk with your hat in your hands and asking for the good grace, you know, for the mere price of $100 a year, Microsoft 360, $100 a year, decent amount of cloud storage, $100 a year for GitHub membership. Can't get away from that one for the unlimited private repos. Ugh. Microsoft really finds a way to get their hands in your wallet in ways that even, even are unavoidable to me. Their hardware is superior. Microsoft hardware is superior. They learned all their lessons from Apple. They learned all their lessons first from Commodore with complete end, to end integration of their components, which Apple learned. And you know, you keep most of the money for yourself. Microsoft hasn't got into the point of making their own CPUs for themselves the way Commodore did first. People think, oh, Apple M whatever processors, M1, M2, but Apple's own silicon of a licensed ARM machine instruction set, but nonetheless, the implementation is Apple's. Who else did that before Apple? So innovative. Hmm, let me think. Commodore? Of course, Commodore just bought Moss. They got Chuck Peddle as part of the deal. You want to see the good guy heroes of the... Oh, and Chuck, I think, is still alive. I think he's living in Sri Lanka. God bless him. Oh, my God. So of these heroes of the world of technology, of which Ken Thompson is probably at the top of the pyramid of heroes, uh, who invented Unix. The inventor of Unix changed the world in profound ways that most people are still only coming to understand. All the proprietary bits that lock you in are being gradually kind of washed away in favor of a more a universal, logical, sensible, uh, small system. System of operating, operating system that is portable, portable between hardware. There's no reason that your systems would not be Unix-based or Linux-based these days. Apple came around long ago on the consumer thing, right? So it was already in all the custom you know, embedded things. It was already using some version of Unix or Linux in the past. You know, Android phone, iPhones, QNX Linux, a very tiny embedded Linux that's in so many things. Um, the invisible hand Intel management stuff that's running even when your computer is sleeping. That's a tiny embedded Unix. So it's everywhere and in everything already that is not consumer facing. And now it's, you know, finishing out its dominance of the computer uh, world. Uh, Windows is the last remaining, you know, front of non Unix slash Linux ness, proprietariness in the consumer world. 
And it hasn't been swapped out wholesale the way Apple did when they switched from OS 9 to, uh, to OS X, but it has, in spirit, with the Windows subsystem for Linux, there's still some proprietary stuff running the show there. All, all systems unified and compatible under Windows. So as long as Windows is running the show and Microsoft gets their licensing fees on the um, on their on their proprietary bits, they don't care if there's free and open source bits elsewhere. So Windows is coming around slowly. Windows 11 has made some big strides. But it's a Unix world and that's just a fact. And it's a Linux world because Linux is one of the best implementations of Unix. Linux is not Unix, but Linux is Unix. Come on, folks. Look at the command set. Look at piping. Look at the APIs. Um, okay, so where was I going with that? I teach you. I teach you about that reality that is everywhere and is everything. And people just don't realize it yet. So I'm going to help you by taking what I found to be my Ikagai. What I love to do. I love this stuff like one loves crossword puzzles and Sudoku and intellectual challenges. So I love to do it. It's a great pastime. I, I'd rather do this than, than physical labor. It's probably less healthy, but still, I love it. Okay. And then it's what I'm good at. Well, I'm not great at it. I'm not naturally inclined to this like those people who's who I covet. The master tool makers. Oh, did I say master? The profoundly expert makers of tools that allow us to make tools. The, ma the, the maker of the tool making tools, Linus Torvalds and Guido Van Rossum, are, you know, are the ones who are really good at this. They are the ones who put out the implementations that won. So, you know, if you want to measure whether people are good at things, look at when something is universally accepted as like right and true, like Unix, and then look at which versions of Unix people are actually using, the superior implementations. The people who are good at things are behind them. So, you know, am I good at things? You know, I'm kind of good at, you know, keeping it light and breezy without getting you know, too full of myself being a developer. So. What I love to do is coding, expressing myself through languages that happen to talk to machines rather than people. I love that. Am I good at it? Well, I guess I'm good at, it, good at doing it in a style that makes it accessible to people, a light and breezy style as opposed to the, you know, true master styles of Guido and Linus. And then uh, what you can get paid for, well, yeah. Sure, everyone needs this. If you can pull data, uh, transform data, and deliver data in a consumable report reporting style, then you can get paid for it. What the world needs? Maybe, maybe. You know what the world needs? The world needs a cure to its pandemic of anxiety and existential crisis in our youth. I would say that the, that the mastery of certain technology tools, particularly Unix slash Linux, Python, Vim, and Git, the four of those in unique combination provides grounding, provides something you can always make money at, something you can always be in love with. In fact, you're in love with more like the things you can do with these tools than the tools themselves. These tools are designed to sort of fade into the background and to become part of your muscle memory so you can stop thinking about them so that when you are inspired with an idea, when the mood strikes you, the technical implementation is not difficult. You don't have to go, mm, what technology should I use? What stacks should I use? Should this be a web app? You know, which cloud providers? You know, what alignments, uh, all this stuff. Uh, should it scale? Am I doing a one-off? All this stuff just just fades away into the background and you can like quickly dash off a first implementation and flesh it out and, and then start an iterative cycle of improvement 
constant improvement. Even if that iterative cycle of improvement includes throwing out the whole first implementation and starting it over again wholesale, that's still iterative improvement when doing it in the first place is not that difficult, you see. I'm doing that with my blog slice and dice, my blog release system, which really builds on the Jekyll static site generator built into GitHub, known as GitHub Pages, previously known as GitHub IO, still hosted on GitHub.io, usually a subdomain of your um, username. So for me, it's Mick Levin, Mick Levin, dot GitHub.io slash usually package name, you know. So it's a username as your subdomain and your repo name, package repo, as your folder name. Unless you use a custom domain, I mostly use custom domain. So what the world needs, yeah, sure, the world needs Linux, Python, Vim, and Git as a cure for depression, existential crisis, anxiety in the world's youth and to equip them with the tools they need to solve the world's problem, to heal the world. I'm doing it indirectly. What the world needs is people who are capable of giving the world what it needs. More people capable of pursuing their ekagai. It's a little bit meta, but you know, this will never blow up on YouTube. This is not worth a million followers. And what's worth a million followers is like some car giveaway or watching a squirrel try and work its way through a obstacle course that only a NASA engineer could build, right? That's, granted, that's awesome. I love that squirrel and I love that NASA engineer. You're, you're wonderful and I love the two V guys, uh, Veritasium and Vsauce. Wow! I wish I could be either of you, but I can't. I'm working a day job. I mean, those two are as well, I think. At least the NASA one is. Who would give up that NASA job? Ideating things for Mars mass? <laughs> you have my job again. You're another one of my alternative multiverse ricks. Oh, all these people. So here I am in marketing, basically. I'm a guy in marketing. That Mike Levin who does all these, you know, talks in his car and, you know, those live streams where he's vimming and uh, Jupiter notebooking. What is he? Who does he? Oh, yeah, he works in marketing. He just helps people make more money on their publications. Sometimes paper publications are noble things. Sometimes they are part of what the world needs. Sometimes when you found yourself compromising in life because of whatever, you know, the hand you were dealt, your parents, where you were born, you know, the your own choices once you get control of the reins of your life and you know making bad choices there's love worthy things in every bad choice it's never too late it's never too late i'm 51 years old do i look 51 years old i plan on having another 50 years and without doing vitamins and scanning my brain like ray kurzweil i mean who needs it you make yourself anti-fragile you make yourself like the Roomba who backs up, turns a little, and tries again. And you make yourself like Charlie Brown no matter how many times you land humiliatingly on your back from Lucy pulling the football away. You go again, but you go again seeking to communicate with Lucy and getting acknowledgement she has to say, yes, I will not pull the football away. Then you have to capture that acknowledgement. You have to make it so that you can prove to other people that Lucy acknowledged that she would not pull the football away. And then when she does, you need to be able to go back and process that, writing about it in Vim and going, I now have evidence that Lucy knowingly pulls the football away when I try and kick at it. What should I do with this? Should I let her know? Should I let the world know? Should I stop playing football with Lucy? You know, what are my solutions? Let's enumerate the solutions and pick the healthiest one for me and the least humiliating for Lucy because everyone deserves a second chance, a third chance, 
it's three strikes, people deserve three chances. On the third strike or on the fourth strike are you out? I have some details I still need to work out. But for example, when people talk over you in conversation, they are expressing that they don't value your opinion and they value their own more. They talk over you three times when you politely try and enter the conversation. And by the third time you're talked over by the same person, you stop contributing. They don't need to hear from you. They don't want to hear from you. You might still try and do good for them, quietly in the background with invisible hands. They don't need to know you're watching their back, but still watch their back. That's me. I probably give people too much credit. They walk all over you. You think you're the softy, so you project green. And you develop skills that when you demonstrate, they go, oh, yeah, oh shit, this person is someone very different than I thought they were. And that is exactly the people, that is exactly the reaction, that is exactly the reaction people will have from you when you break out Vim and you start naturally doing your thing in Vim, say, take notes at a meeting. And that's all I have to say about that. Thanks for joining me. Hope to see you again soon. And do not forget to subscribe, hit that little bell to be notified of my live broadcast. Thumbs up this video and all the rest of that. Happy horseshit.